honestly, I've been looking around for this new UE coming soon, this announcement all over their socials or on their websites. I can't seem to find it, which is kind of strange. And so if you guys have seen it somewhere else, do let me know where you have seen it. But otherwise, welcome. Welcome to batch three of the new unique equipments. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about batch three of the new unique equipments coming out in I think about like 14 days, two weeks from today. And so for you pre-con gang, you already know what's going on. But if you are new to the game and I am seeing a lot of new players, then this is the new unique equipment system. It's essentially you've got all of your equipments and then you're going to get an extra equipment, one for every single one of these characters. That character wields her own unique equipment and this changes the way that they work. And so what that means for this video is that today I will be discussing these UEs or these characters that will be getting their UEs and giving you guys kind of like a priority perhaps or some kind of level of analysis. And so without further ado, let me introduce you guys to the characters that are getting their UEs this month. So honestly, this month is pretty spicy. It's a pretty big deal. We've got Akari, we've got Anna, we've got Reno, we've got Yori. And then down here, and they are all in the same batch, we've got Eriko, we've got Shinobu, we've got Jun, Shizuru, and Mitsuki. So you guys already know the drill. I'm just going to hop out of this and let's go into spreadsheet mode. And so my guys, welcome to Miss Niara's spreadsheet. This is a great spreadsheet, a great resource for a lot of different things, like for rank comparison as well as unique equipments. However, before we get into this chart itself, I do want to show you guys a video over here, which is a visualization of the damage, the approximate damage that each of the characters were doing in CB, from CB1 all the way to the current CB in JP. So this was actually made almost a year ago. However, it's got all of the data that we need and like, I just want to show you guys something, right? So ever since the beginning, the beginning of time, Kari has been that powerhouse. Kari has been, she's been the goddess of damage essentially, right? So we did have like the recent release of Arisa. We did have the release of um, a couple of others like Ilya, Kyoka, stuff like that, right? Skiaru. However, Kari has remained constant. If you guys have not noticed in your timelines and stuff, she's actually been so freaking prevalent, so dominant as to even like, I'm pretty sure she out damages Christina for, for quite a long time. Like, look at that. Oh, Tomo comes close. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know if she actually hits it. Yeah, see, Tomo just gets pulled back. And so the reason I wanted to show you guys this visualization is because I wanted to show you guys the impact of Eriko UE, who should be coming up right about now. And there she is. 1.2 mil down against 725k for Kari. Utterly insane. Like it's... <laughs> It's freaking crazy the amount of damage that Eriko has been pumping out ever since she got her UE to really dwarf our current goddess of damage. And you guys also see Mwimi over here who is second to Eriko. That's That really says something considering Mwimi is a freaking prefers character. So like, yeah. And on top of that, Eriko actually is dominating for like quite a long time. I, I, I actually can't remember who takes over her. It might actually go all the way up to Nyaru. But yeah, at this point, I can already show you guys. These are the summer units. Eriko is still dominating with her UE. So yeah, hopefully that is some data, some context, some like statistics to back up these, uh, what I'm about to say. And what I'm about to say is that Eriko is going to be the first priority. And so with that, let's take a look at this document right here. So Nyara has taken the liberty of like color coding what she thinks is like a high, low, medium priority for both crafting and leveling the UEs. And honestly, this month is like pretty freaking insane because we get Eriko and Anna. Anna is also really cracked out. All right, so let's start off with Eriko. So Miss Nyara has rated her at a high craft, high level priority. And I can only completely agree with that because as she describes over here, her purpose is massive massive, massive, strongest physical attack for one year, but not only that, Stallbreaker for PvP. So for you guys who have been using Stallbreakers in PvP for a while, like if you can imagine, it's the old school Jun, and then you've got maybe Christina, Makoto, Akari, Skiaru, something like that. Eriko very much starts taking like the role of the Kari or just the massive physical DPS. That's from a PvP perspective. For CB, you can already see like this guy over here, uh, if we come back a little bit, Kari does not get displaced, honestly, for quite a 
a while by anyone else. And so Kari is still kind of relevant, but it's very much like the, if you guys have been playing the recent CBs, Christina has been a higher borrow priority. Erica is going to be very much like that. So she is going to probably out prior like the Kari. And so if you guys still have not like farmed your shards for Erica, like, oh God help you. Just, just start, start today, man. Start today, guys. All right. And so for the changes of her skill one, what makes her actually cracked out is that her buff goes from 750 attack to 2000 attack for herself. 12 seconds. But then on top of that, she also buffs her own attack by 9,000 and crit by 400 for 7.5 seconds. Can you guys like freaking imagine how much attack 9,000 is? I like, I'm pretty sure no character in the game right now even has 9,000 attack. Like my guys, look at this. Kari, who is our current goddess of war, she is only at 6.2k attack. For freaking Eriko to just randomly pull a buff of 9k attack out of nowhere, you can already see why she is so freaking dominant. Massive massive physical attack, massive crits. She is going to be a powerhouse for, as Miss Nyara described, for a freaking year. And on top of that, what is so cracked out about her UE is, is that she is getting not only attack and crit, but also TP boost as well, which scales with level. And so it's for all of these reasons combined that she is a high craft priority as well as a high leveling priority. Honestly, her UE is probably like one of the best, if not the best from all of these OG characters. Characters. But I think I've raved on about Erico for long enough. You guys probably get the point. So let's go on to Anna. So Anna is an interesting one. So let's have a look at her skills first. She is going from 150% to 205% damage, which is okay. You know, the UE is boosting up her single target damage by a little bit. But what is really insane about Anna's UE is that she debuffs M defense by 60 for 12 seconds. But realistically speaking, that is not the most cracked part. She spams the skill as Ms. Nyara says. So let me go show you guys some proof. This is the moveset pattern of Anna. And as you guys can see, her freaking loop is literally skill, auto, skill, auto, skill, auto. And so she is going to be throwing out those skill ones and the M defense downs like freaking no tomorrow. Freaking insane. Like it's actually freaking insane. When I first saw this, I was like, oh man, is this, is this actually real or is this a scam? But yeah, it, apparently it's true. So that effect already tells you that it is going to be a massive massively high craft. You're going to be definitely using it for CB. You can definitely use it for PVP. Although like I still don't really like Anna because she unfortunately when she dumps her UB, she like gets so fragile and she just immediately dies. Not to mention that she is also in the middle position. Like she's in prime targeting zone for Ninons, for like the H Shinobus, just other characters in like the cleave meta right now. Right? So yeah. In terms of leveling her UE attack 221, crit 25 up to attack 671 and crit at 75. I think it's good. However, like playing through these last few CBs, I think that the, the level component of some of these guides, it's a little bit overstated and it's not Miss Niara's fault, right? I actually think that like some of these stats, while they're really freaking good, they're almost inconsequential, right? So for me, the philosophy of like leveling UEs has changed a little bit. So for example, Erico's has TP boost, right? So TP boost, as you guys already know, is extremely important. It's probably the most important stat in the game. So for me personally, unless Unless the UE is providing like scaling TP boost or unless it's providing like really, really robust stats. So for example, like this guy over here and honestly not even that guy over there. So if I come back over here, this guy HP boost plus 30 goes and scales up to HP boost 90. So Yukari is certainly somebody that I have just slammed all the levels on because she is giving everybody like the massive, massive HP, right? Her whole shtick is healing people. And if this is going to boost her heals, then like you definitely should level it up. And then on top of that, coming back to UE1 over here, as you can see, Pekrin HP boost 13 goes up to 38. This is another one of these examples. For me, level priority has changed to like, it's only if it's insanely game changing, like something like that. But also for me, it's actually Kurumi because she is getting all defense plus 60, HP regen, as well as HP, all extremely useful stats, all at high numbers. And so personally, I've come to like, not really like these like attack and crit ones because they're really average compared to like some of the other UEs. So yeah, that can cover off essentially like everyone down below. So attack and crit, I've got attack and all defense. It's kind of, it's kind of whatever. We got this one over here. There doesn't seem to be any crazy ones except for this one down here. So yeah, back over to Anna, attack and crit is 
it's just unfortunately not going to change overly much. It's just going to change your final damage. It's not going to change the way that you use her. And so with that, let's come down to Akari next. So for Akari, Akari's skill one is pretty freaking insane. You guys already know she is like the queen of magic defense debuff. And what her UE does is essentially just really amplifies that, right? So as you can see over here, UE debuff, it's M defense by 20 for 12 seconds. So she's going to be in a pretty similar situation to Anna where she's going to be throwing out those M def debuffs. And then on top of that, looking at this one over here, like attack and all defense, again, doesn't change the way that she plays. And so for me, that is absolutely a low priority for leveling. And as for Akari's use in CB and PvP, for CB, she certainly has been like, oh, you got to use the Akari UB first and then like spam everyone else's UB so they all heal up. And a lot of the time, this allows you to run like a healerless comp, right? So no Masato, no Yui or whatever. On the other hand, I use Akari quite a fair bit in PvP to be part of like a Mage Melt comp because of her M defense down. To be honest, pretty straightforward, nothing too much left to be said. And so let's move on to Yori down here. So Yori is an interesting one where like a lot of people call her kind of like whale bait because whilst not overly impressive at two or three stars, she becomes an insane powerhouse, like almost Ilya-like at five stars. So before we go any further, let's have a look at what exactly changes for her. So she buffs her own attack by 2000 and it is raised up to 5000 for UE. And again, you guys have already seen where 5000 attack is going to take you. It's going to take you to freaking cloud nine. However, she still has the 60% self damage can crit reduced by M defense. But the super cool thing about Yori's UE is that it is going to restore her own TP by 199. Honestly, that is pretty decent. However, in terms of like real world utility, I would say unless like you're an avid PvPer and you want to meme on people, you can probably hold off and almost outright ignore Yori. She's good. Like she's honestly, she's actually great. But for most people, you're not going to be able to like pull in the resources to be ma making her do what you want her to do, which is nuking people from the sky with like a massive thunderbolt. It's, it's a really freaking cool, but like I think most people don't have those clan tokens like sitting around. All right, so that's your Next, let's have a look at Jun. Jun is an interesting one. So her skill one is going to change from getting a little bit more of a single target heal to the ally with the lowest HP. But then the effect of the UE is that that ally that got the heal is going to also get a P attack buff by 1100 and action speed increase by 20% for 12 seconds. Both of these are honestly like fantastic statistics to boost up your P attack by 1100 and your action speed. Obviously, I'm a massive fan of action speed. It is very much like a Kokoro buff, essentially. And so I think this is quite good. It is certainly a medium priority craft because like whilst this bad boy is giving away 1100p attack and action speed by 20%, you've got other people who are gaining freaking 9000 attack. You've got like a constant debuffer just throwing these things out like pancakes, right? So it's certainly understandable as to why Jun is just going to be like a little bit lower on the priority list. So the thing about this UE is that she gains only a little bit of heals for her single target, her skill one. And it's for this reason that you should look at this more as an offensive UE rather than a defensive one. It's pretty ironic considering it's like a piece of armor, but like I digress, let's move on. All right, so next we've got Reno. Buffs own attack by 1500 up to 2000 with the UE. And then on the other side, she is also getting 75 crit up from 45. And so like these kinds of numbers can just really show you, right? Like look at that. Like there is no other character that is getting 9000 attack and 400 crit. Like freaking poor Reno is only going to be getting 75 crit and 2000 attack. However, what is really, really nice about Reno skill one is that it actually lasts for 99 seconds, the crit part at least. But these two aren't the insane parts of Reno's UE. It is actually this guy over here. Buffs own action speed by 80% for 12 seconds. Like, I don't know how many of you remember like the Mage Mail or the impact of Monica on the freaking arena. Kokoro gives you 20% action speed. Monica gives you 50% action speed and it already like does so much. Like they're like freaking flinging things like crazy. But then you got freaking Reno who's buffing her own action speed by 80%. I don't know if we're ever going to see anything like this for some of the other core characters or rather the OG characters, but that is really, really freaking cracked out so there is a medium craft priority but like to be honest I haven't been using Reno overly much in arena with that being said though I have been seeing Reno's on defense a little bit but like with this UE change it might be the rise of Reno again however again Reno is most certainly like a PvP unit only so if you guys don't really care about it then you guys could hold off on Reno all right next we have Shinobu who is absolutely cracked 
out. So let's start off with her skill 1, and her original skill doesn't change, but the UE effect is AOE buffs P attack by 1200 and P crit by 50 for 12 seconds. The range is 225, so what that means is that from Shinobu, 225 this way and 225 that way. And so with Shinobu's positioning, I'm pretty sure she covers off like most of the physical DPSs that we already use. So I'm talking like the Kari, the Christina, the Makoto, the Tomo, the Hiyori, you already know it. But what I really want to make you pay attention to is how much these values are, like 1200 for P attack and then 50 P crit if I go back up here. Like Reno is juicing up her own attack by 2000 and her own crit by 75, and but this one is AOE. Like that's, that's actually pretty freaking cracked out. And then when you're able to splash this effect onto like your Christina, your eventually your Muimi, your Eriko UE, it's gonna start looking a bit hazy, you know? Like you start wondering, oh, where did the boss's HP go, you know? All right, so I've emphasized how freaking sweet this skill one is. Miss Nyara has classified it as a medium craft priority. However, like keep a close eye on your clan because chances are a lot of clans are probably going to be like mandating this guy here. And especially if you like to play on auto, like think about it. If you can just stack on buffs and then like hit it on auto, they're just going to do more damage overall, right? Now, the other thing about Shinobu's kit is that she is getting TP boost as well from 5 up to 15. And so whilst Miss Niara has put her at a high priority and going by my logic before, I would also have put her at a high priority. I think that leveling this UE is is definitely at a high priority if you use her. And by using her, I don't mean like throwing her into a team and autoing, like that's not really using her. If you're gonna do that, I would say don't bother leveling this, like that TP gain is too small for it to be impacting an auto timeline. My advice here is you really need to consult with your clan because every clan has different timelines. If they have seen the use of Shinobu and they are keen on using her, then by all means, go ahead. And so with that being said, let's go on to these red guys down here is very, very sad. The Mitsuki and the Shizuru. So unfortunately you guys can't see it on the screen, but I should have it up there in post-production. Ha, oh, post-production magic. But Mitsuki's UE like kind of sucks, right? So it buffs her curse damage from 2640 up to 3960. Whilst this is cool, especially for tank killing because curses go through like that defense and stuff, it's just not really that impactful, especially in the context of CB, right? And on top of that, she is going to debuff action speed by 5%. Like that's, uh, that's, that's so little. What the frick? Like, I don't know what Crunchyroll was thinking when they designed the Mitsuki UE though. Like, oh man, she's, she's already like used in every single CB team. So let's just give her like, like a, let's give her a peanut. Let's let's put it that way. And that is most certainly how it feels. Like it does feel like she got a freaking peanut. On the other side, her level priority is also high. And yes, because she's got the TP boost, I think Miss Nyara is probably using like a very similar logic to I am. But to be honest, like the only reason that you really want TP boost is to UB more with Mitsuki. And generally speaking, the Mitsuki cancels for her poison are already like on time, right? I think that generally speaking, like again, unless you guys have clans with like the special timelines for Mitsuki, you don't level it either. And so that is going to bring us to our last unit of the day of this batch, batch 3, Shizuru. So Shizuru is a pretty interesting one. She's got a single target heal, which is going from 6338 up to 8812. And on top of that, she's also going to be buffing that ally's P defense that receives that heal by 80. I just want to kind of like do a sneaky and come over here and show you guys Yukari single target heal of 5129 up to 12k plus regens 3k over 8.5 seconds, plus giving a M defense buff on her UE by 80 to that unit that received the heal. 12k heal, 80 M defense, coming back over here, 8.8k heal, ATP defense. Don't get me wrong, the P defense portion is really great, especially because it's going to the ally with the lowest HP. However, I also kind of feel like Shizuru was also handed a peanut. Like her heal only got boosted by 2.5k, whereas Yukari's more than doubled, right? It actually freaking tripled. It makes me very, very sad for Shizuru, like she definitely has her uses in PvP. I've used her very much in like uh, for Ilya healing. But man, I'd be lying if I said this UE was like really good. It just, it's freaking doo-doo. It's so sad, man. What the frick? And as for the stats, at level 130, HP boost plus 38. Whereas I come over here and I look at Yukari and she gets a HP boost of 90. Like what the frick? Why is Yukari the golden child? Or rather, maybe Shizuru is the neglected child. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever know. Maybe if I ever get to Side Games headquarters, I'll go ask them. And so considering these guys are red and like some of these guys over here are blue, you can certainly go back and like fill out some of these guys over here. Like for example, instead of crafting UEs for your Shizuru, Mitsuki, or even Reno, you can put them onto like Arisa, your Tamaki, your Ninon. Because I don't know about you guys, but like I am running pretty low on shards. It's actually quite hard to maintain these UEs. And so for me personally, like the PvP differential has been getting greater and greater. It's 
I'm, I'm getting freaking whacked really hard. However, with all of that being said, I think that essentially covers off all of these UEs for this batch three. And so my boys, you already know what time it is. It is secret question time. And I want to ask you guys, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about these UEs? Are you guys hyped to see freaking Eriko buff her own attack by 9,000 for some reason and 400 crit? Are you finally going to take notice of Anna and how she's just like, auto, defense down, auto, defense down, auto, Defense down! And then Akari with essentially defense down, defense down, defense down, defense down. That's pretty, that's actually like the UEs in a nutshell. Let me know how you guys feel about these UEs. Let me know if you're going to slam it on the Reno anyway because you want to use that action speed buff. Let me know if you are a Yori appreciator and you are going to use her anyway. You guys have the five star Yoris. You guys are going to use the massive UE, the TP gain, the massive, massive lightning nuke. Or you can complain to me about how you don't have enough hearts to make UEs. That's also an option too. Whatever your thoughts are, I'd like to invite you to drop them down in the comments below. And if you do so, well, thank you guys so much because it means you've made it up until the end of the video. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please like this video. And if you did want to see more, then please subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Erica once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.